All right, welcome to this cold email woodpecker tutorial. I use woodpeckers, one of my favorite tools I use out there. So this is a tutorial about woodpecker. I'm gonna go over all the different bits in woodpecker and why I love it. Basically why I love it, it's just really simple to use. The pricing makes sense, it's not too expensive. And yeah, I've tried a lot of different tools out there. I'm always trying new tools. People are always sending me tools to try. And Woodpecker just keeps being consistently one of my favorites. Just because if you're just doing cold email, I would use Woodpecker. But if you're at this video, you probably know that already. So let's jump into the tutorial. And the first thing you probably should know about is if you click over here, you need to set up your email address. Click on settings and you're gonna to come to this page here. You need to link your email address to the cold email tool because the cold email tool is gonna be sending emails from your Gmail, G Suite, and the other places you're gonna be doing. So once you're here, you can go basically to add an email account and then you go to Gmail or whichever one you got an exchange, you got exchange there, Office 365. So I think I've got most of mine there, but let's pretend I'm gonna sign into this one. So you just click on that one, you click allow, and it should configure and allow you to do that straight. I haven't actually done this for a short while, so let's see if that works. But it should be pretty straightforward because now configuring your email account. So let's see if that works, but I believe it does. While we wait for that, we're gonna be looking into how to set up a campaign. So what we do is you go to campaigns. It's really simple. You click on add campaign. And here we go, we have a new campaign and you select which email you want to be sending it from. So I'm going to pretend I'm sending it from Phil Akin. You should probably also use a sub, a different domain to the one you're using. But yeah, look, okay, here you go. Here's the email address, create a signature. So here, once you've done that, you can create a signature, which is really cool. So you can use all the different things here. I think what I did, I went to another website and created a signature somewhere else and just pasted it here. And it's quite cool because you don't know you have to do it all the time. So see it, set it later in the setting, but you can just save it here and you can check it later. So we need to also set up the SPF and DKAIM. So it has been your email address has been set up. You do not have to have an empty slot this email. Okay, that's fine. Domain checkup. Let's have a look what it's going to say. So if you do a domain checkup, it'll check on the age of your domain, all that kind of stuff. Your SPF record is set up incorrectly. So if you're on a DKIM, so you need to make sure you get all this right. Often you have a new domain, probably often, and then you're going to have to try to warm them up, warm up the domain. I think with G Suite, you can't warm up anymore. So you have to do it manually, but they do have a a service here which warms it up automatically for if you don't have Gmail. We'll get into that in a minute. So how do you set up a SPF record? SPF records is really important to set up because it's sending the right signal to 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 your the email provider such as Google, G, Gmail. So in your own domain's reputation, etc. 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 So you basically need to how do you set up the way to set up SPF depends on your domain host. Make sure you include all the applications. For example, if you're using G Suite, send your message, you should include the following record. So you need to put it in your in your GoDaddy. So if you or whichever one you've got your bought your domain from. So if you bought it from GoDaddy, you need to add the SPF record. And there's a whole I'll leave a link to this, which is how to actually do that. But basically, yeah, you just put it all there. And there's a video here. It should be pretty simple. I haven't done it in a while, but I remember it being quite easy to do. The other one is a DKM. You can check it all there. There's a tutorial. I'm not going to go over this tutorial how to do that, but this is the kind of the housekeeping you need to get done. So, link. There's an article here on how to do your DKIM, DKIM records as well. But again, it wasn't really difficult when I did it. So you can do that there. So once you've done that, we want to be setting up a campaign. So to set up a campaign, you click on add campaign, you choose your email address here and you can name your campaign. So this is a test campaign for YouTube. Name it whatever makes sense to you. And then you have a workflow. So you have the path for one. It's really cool what you can do here is you can schedule you start the campaign no sooner than a certain date. I often don't do that, but I do have a condition which is if a prospect so the, i don't have a condition to start with so i would delete the condition by clicking here yes i'm sure so i wouldn't add any conditions yet but the first email so you add all your prospects in and they get sent 
a certain amount of email in a certain period of time. So for example, on the right, you can say when you said the emails, Sunday to Saturday. I often do working days, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., but you can set that up based on whatever makes sense. And then you write the subject line, so you can do LinkedIn ads. So I'm often sending based on LinkedIn ads. And the reason why I love Woodpack is you can A-B test really easily. So I'd write, so hey, I saw your LinkedIn post about A-B testing, blah, blah, blah. So you write like your whole kind of thing here. Do you have time for a call? Whatever it is, right? And what I would often do is then just copy that, click on that to get version B, put it exactly the same, but change the subject line. And so that with that, you're gonna be checking the subject line between A and B. If A is doing a lot better than B, it means the subject line is better because you've left the, this is a true A, B test. You've left everything exactly the same, all the other variables the same, part of the subject line. So you can test that however many you want to test there. So then I'll do it again. I would add the, ex I would then add the subject line from A, but then I'll change this. So this, I'd always have at least three A-B tests on this, and I'll be testing both the subject line, at least one A-B test of the subject line, and at least one A-B test of the actual body. And you can be also doing many more, because but you need to make sure just in each one you're changing one variable from A or from C, and then you have A, you can compare apples for apples. So for example, if you're changing, for example, just the first line, or maybe your pitch, or maybe just the call to action, everything else is exactly the same, but your call to actions, hey, do you have half an hour for a phone call, versus hey, would you like to reply to this email if this is something that interests you? Checking that, that is really important. And this is why I love cold emailing with Woodpeck. It's so easy to A-B test that. And so once you've done that, you've got your signature and you've set all that, you can then add a condition. And this is when I'd add a condition. So you can make it as, firstly, I would make it, you can set the amount of days after, hours or days actually, after this email sent. So let's say three days after this email sent, you want to send another email, you can do that. And that's what you can recommend, I would recommend. And then also you can add other conditions such as if they've opened, yes, send them this. If they haven't, you can send them a different email. I would say this is really important to do as well. But for now, we're gonna get rid of that and we're just gonna go straight into email number two. So this will be follow up. If you leave this blank, it will leave the same thread. And then you would write something like, just following up, blah, 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 blah. I wouldn't recommend that. But email number two, email number three, email number four. So each time you're adding um, a condition and this time it's recommending six days and then you go for another email and then you do another one, another email. You can do as many follow-ups as you feel makes sense. And once you've written all that out, you have your campaign ready to go. And all you now need to do is add your prospects. You can do that over here, you click on prospects. And I always have from a file, I always have a CSV file and I just upload that CSV file. And in that file will often be first name, last name, maybe a first line of column, which you can add as a snippet. So actually let's go back here just quickly because I would like to explain snippets are really interesting. So I've actually not explained this at all. So it won't be, hey, Phil, of course, it will be, hey, and then you're going to make it where is snippets in here you go hey first name so there's loads of other snippets obviously this snippet first name will be in your first name column on your google docs or csv file so that's where it's going to draw that from but you can make it last name full name title you can just do snippet too you can do any snippet you want it doesn't have to be titled exactly like this but you can create a column in your csv file and make whatever snippet that makes sense so you might want to do I often do a snippet which is called first liner. So in my Google Sheet, I'll go for each prospect and I'll either hire someone or I'll do it myself where I'll literally go in and type a first liner for each prospect. And then I just put it up in the software and just send it 50 every single day, five days a week, and the first liners are done. Or for example, I might do a snippet, like depending on if they've got a LinkedIn inside tag or not, this kind of stuff. So snippets are really useful. You can add HTML code, you can add video loom, which is super powerful, a loom link with a GIF, which is really great. This is something I've been doing a lot about. And so I'm gonna be releasing, I have a whole course, you can link in the description below, all about how to cold email really well. It's totally free, five day course, delivered in your inbox every single day for five or six days. But I'm gonna be going quite heavy on video prospecting. Video prospecting is one of my favorite ways to do outreach. 
So once you've uploaded your prospects, you can go to the summary and just see if everything's there. Another cool thing you can do is actually send yourself a test email. So you click there and say where you want to send it, it'll go to your inbox. You can also do a spam check. First, add the prospects to the campaign. So I'm not going to add that now, but you can do a spam check, which is really cool. So once you've done a campaign, you've added your email, you've got a campaign, you've got your follow-ups, you've got the timeline, you've set your dates and you put your prospects in, you're ready to launch your campaign. You can do that. So this is the, there's also some other stuff you can do like deliverability and you can also see exactly the, um, some really good data on how many people are opening, how many people are clicking, how many people are responding, happy, not happy, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really cool. But for now, this is all I wanna go into in this tutorial, because it's already 11 minutes going, but there's a link to in the description below all on to get your, with my link, you get an extra 15 days free trial. So I have an affiliate link in the description below. So 15 days, you get 30 day free trial. So use that and definitely check out the free cold email course. I have also link in the description below. And apart from that, have an awesome day.